Family trust. Should you set one up? Are they that good? What's up, tax fam? Today's video is all about trust and more specifically, family trust. They're all the craze at the moment amongst investors because they offer great asset protection and a few tax minimization benefits. But today, I've got a newer and better face to help explain this video. Molly, she's our supervisor accountant here at Box Advisory. Don't worry, I'll still be around because I know you'll miss me, but otherwise, take it away, Molly. Thanks, Evie. Hey everyone, I'm Molly, and I'll be helping you today with understanding family trust a little better. But before you feed into the craze, you need to know how trust work, what your options are, and what potential drawbacks come with investing this way. So let's start with the basics. What's a trust? A trust is legally recognized relationship that exists between party A and party B. Party A holds property for the benefits of party B. Party A, known as a trustee, is the legal owner of a trust assets, for example, investment property. And party B is the beneficiary of those trust assets. There's several different types of trust used in Australia, mainly discretionary trust, unit trust, hybrid trust, and testimony trust. But among all of these options, discretionary trusts, commonly known as family trusts, are definitely the most popular and widely used trusts. What makes them so appealing is that the trustee is given complete discretion as to how the trust income is distributed to the beneficiaries. So, a family trust can operate a business, make investments, and receive distributions and dividends. The trustee will then need to distribute the trust distribution according to the trust deed and the trust resolution. So, it's super flexible in terms of income distribution, but they also have a few other benefits. For example, asset holds in discretionary trusts are separate from assets of the beneficiaries, so that trust assets will be protected from the creditors. A family trust can also be an effective way to manage your tax obligations. So, because the trustee has the freedom to distribute income, if one beneficiary is paying more income tax than the other, the income can be distributed in the manner that equals out the amount of tax each beneficiary is liable to pay. For example, if one beneficiary earns far more than the another beneficiary who is taxed at the top marginal tax rate, it will make more sense to distribute a greater share of trust income to the beneficiary who is taxed at the lower marginal tax rate. This is especially beneficial in discretionary trusts when there is more than one beneficiary. And if you hold any investments in the trust for more than 12 months, you'll be able to claim a 50% discount on capital gain tax should you decide to sell the asset. Another benefit is that it's a great estate planning tool. If your assets are held in a trust, all the beneficiaries can continue to receive income from the trust instead of having to distribute your asset among the family. This is one sure way to minimize your family disputes. But as with anything, there are a few drawbacks with using a family trust. For example, if any of the trust assets end up running a loss, the loss will remain trapped inside the trust and get carried forward to later years. The losses are then offset against future profits. And while a family trust can be used as an asset protection strategy against your personal creditors, a discretionary trust can have its own creditors, and those creditors have a right to the property or business interests held in the trust. You also have to consider the cost of setting up and maintaining a trust. It can cost around $2,000 to set it up and then around $3,000 each year in accounting fees. So that's family trust in a nutshell. Now, there are certain situations where I would definitely advise going the friendly trust route. The first one is, let's say you own your business in your personal name and your retained earnings are more than $500,000. In this instance, your business is pretty much vulnerable to your personal creditors. So if you were to go wrong and you defaulted on certain debts, your creditors could go after your company. Having a trust own your business would then protect it from your personal creditors. The second scenario is if you want to buy investment properties or shares to have your family benefit from the investment returns. 
By setting up a family trust, your family members can each get a share of the trust income generated from those investments. This can also be a beneficial setup if you're running a family business. If one of these scenarios stands out to you and you're thinking about setting a family trust, then there are a few things you should know about the setup process. There are a few different parties involved in the process. First, you have to have the trustee who is party responsible for making sure that the trust is managed in accordance with the trust deed. The trustee can also be a company. Then you have to appoint the beneficiaries, which we spoke about earlier. They won't have any control over the trust, but they benefit from it. There is also a settler who is responsible for initiating the setup of the trust, appointing the trustee and naming the beneficiaries. And lastly, you have an appointer. This is the person that has the right and power to remove and nominate trustees. Usually, this happens when a trustee passes away or cannot continue to manage the trust for some reason. Before setting up a trust, we suggest that you consult with a financial advisor or accountant because each individual circumstances are different and the objectives of the trust should align with those circumstances. If you would like to talk to an expert about setting up a family trust, please reach out to us. Otherwise, that's it from me. Remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.